we're going to start a new subject. And the subject we're going to talk about is that of oscillations. And before we begin talking about all of the math that's involved with this, it's not really actually that much, we're going to actually give an example of why this is important to study. So let's see how we can produce what we are going to call oscillatory motion. And this is actually something that Galileo first saw, um, this example, and he looked up with a telescope he created, he looked up at Jupiter, and he saw that he uh, was able to see that there are some moons, and they're called the four Galilean moons. And this, the closest one to Jupiter to this is the moon called Io. And nice little pictures of them that we got from Wikipedia. But what he noticed in his telescope was something kind of interesting. What he was able to look at was a side-on view. So if we looked at Jupiter from the side, this is what this axis is going to be, and I look at the position of Io, and I plot it as a function of time. What's going to happen really, if we look from above, is that Io is going to track around Jupiter in a relatively circular orbit. What's going to happen is you'll notice that this guy is starting to move towards the left, towards the minus sign on here. And what happens is it starts to go around, it gets behind the planet, it goes um, keeps going around in a circle. And it's looking like in one dimension it's just going sideways. What he was able to do as he goes around this is he was able to deduce from the motion, the position, looking at just the x position as a function of time. He'd step off time and he'd plot the x position as a function of time and he was able to create this curve, this oscillatory curve, a curve that repeats itself with a certain period. And he noticed that the moon followed this trajectory. And from that, he was able to deduce that Jupiter had not one, not just Io, but four moons orbiting around it. So it's just kind of an exciting little thing. But what we're noticing from this is that we get this pattern, this thing that looks like a cosine curve or a sine curve, um, that we can produce it if we were to plot one dimension of a circular orbit. So if we look on from the side, we plot the circular orbit, it looks like the moon starts at one place, goes over, and comes back. And that plot does sweep out that. We could look from the other side and see the exact same thing, except we'd probably get a sine curve instead of a cosine curve. So this is just one of the few examples that we'll look at of how to create oscillatory behavior. So, as I said, Galileo was able to figure out that Io was actually a uh, moon revolving around it based off of this oscillatory matter. Matter, And this is a wonderful little picture of Jupiter with the four Galilean moons, as you can see. And you can see that each of them have a different, different rate of oscillation, different period from when they start to when they get back to the same thing. Uh, Io has a period of about one and three quarters of a day to get around uh, Jupiter. So it's actually a pretty quick orbit. Um, the other ones are a little bit slower, so they don't move nearly as much, but you can see Io and then you can see the other um, three. Which is kind of a fun little thing. So in the following uh, videos we're going to actually look at the math that governs this motion. And hopefully it won't be too terribly confusing. It's actually a pretty interesting concept and it does come up over and over again in not only mechanics but in almost all branches of physics. So it is kind of an important subject. So that being said, good luck with oscillations and uh, hopefully you'll find it as interesting as we do.